Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Gonna be giving you my player ratings from our 3-2 loss against RB Leipzig yesterday night. So David De Gea, he's gonna get a 4 out of 10. David De Gea was the culprit for the third goal. It was poor communication between David De Gea and Harry Maguire. Now, in a lot of games this season, you know, David De Gea has actually done well. You know, he's made some very, very good saves. But there has been some games where he really hasn't had much to do. He will remain our number one for this present time, but, you know, there is a lot of Manchester United fans that are saying now Dean Henderson should be our number one. You know, this is David De Gea's 10th season at the football club, so he has been a long serving and he has made over 500 appearances for Manchester United in all competitions. Now, Anne Wan-Bissaka... He's going to get a 3 out of 10. I think yesterday night's game was his worst game as a Manchester United player. Um, Anne wan -Bissaka was in Angelino's pocket. He lost the ball far too many times. He showed no attacking intent whatsoever. And defensively, he was poor and he was caught out of position a few times. And that's disappointing because Anwan Bissaka has endured quite a few good games this season and the games he has played well in his show, good attacking intent is obviously his defensive contributions being good, he's got in good positions, he's put good crosses into the box. But we have got concerns about his lack of attacking intent and his distribution. He's only scored one goal for the football club. And that was the 4-1 win against Newcastle earlier on in the season. This is his second season at Manchester United. We got him in a deal worth £50 million from Crystal Palace in the summer of 2019. So yeah, 3 out of 10 for him. Victor Lindelof, I'm going to give him a 4 out of 10. I thought he was very, very poor. And he was far too exposed at the back. And I've got strong reservations about Victor Lindelof because he's too slow. He's nowhere near on the same level as Harry Maguire. And he's enjoyed a lot of bad games as a Man United player. You know, he's enjoyed a good three years or so now at the football club. Harry Maguire, he's going to get a 5 out of 10. Like I said, Harry Maguire was partly to blame for the third goal. He was chasing a lot. Um, he missed out on vital interceptions. So he endured a very, very poor game. We got Harry Maguire in a deal worth £80 million from Leicester. So as it stands at the moment, he is the most expensive centre-half in the world. And we definitely overpaid for him. And he is our current captain. Don't get me wrong, he's enjoyed some good games this season where he showed that ability to play out from the back and he's looked very effective in the air. But um, yeah, and don't forget he did have early season troubles. Luke Shaw. He's going to get a 5 out of 10. I thought Luke Shaw enjoyed a very poor game. It was Luke Shaw's first start for Man United uh, since the 3-1 win against Everton, was it, last month? Because Luke Shaw's just come back from a hamstring problem. Luke Shaw was exploited far too many times and he left too much space for RB Leipzig to get in behind. And he was caught out of position, I think, for one of the goals. Now, before Luke Shaw got that, ham that hamstring injury, I thought he was in good form, to be honest with you. And the element of concern about him, he is injury prone. Now, Alex Tellez, he's going to get a 4 out of 10. I thought Tellez was also very, very poor in the game. Obviously, he was playing at wing-back. 
And that's Tellez's first par game as a Manchester United player. I still think he's going to be a very good signing for Manchester United. You know, we obviously got him in a deal worth 15.4 million, but every player you know enjoys a bad game. Scott McTominway, I'm going to give him a 5 out of 10. I thought he was very, very poor, you know, careless in possession. And I have got my reservations about Scott McTominway. I really, really have. Was it just after the first lockdown? He signed a five-year contract with Manchester United, so he did commit his future with the club. So yeah, so McTomway's going to get a 5 out of 10 from me. Nemanja Matic, I'm going to give him a 4 out of 10. I thought he was very, very poor in the game as well. Uh, we shouldn't even be starting Matic, to be honest with you. Matic has been poor this season when he has played. He did have some good games, though, towards the end of last season. You know, was it during the summer uh, or was it at the start of this season? Matic signed a three-year deal with Man United. We got him in a deal worth £40 million from Chelsea back in 2017. So, yeah, Matic, 4 out of 10. Raul Bruno Fernandes, I'm going to give him a 7 out of 10. I thought Bruno Fernandes did quite well. You know, Bruno Fernandes obviously scored from the penalty. Um, I think he also got an assist in the game, did Bruno Fernandes. And Bruno Fernandes had other chances, didn't he? You know, he obviously hit the crossbar from the free kick. You know, he had other chances where Galaxy had to make some saves. Like I've said to you, know, Bruno Fernandes has made the difference in this team. He has endured almost a year now at Manchester United. You know, he has scored quite a lot of goals, but the vast majority of his goals have come from the penalty spot. You know, he's also provided assists. Not so long ago, he won Player of the Month for November. He's won that quite a few times now. Uh, we paid £47 million for him from Sporting Lisbon back in January. And yeah. And don't forget, he's created more chances than any other player in the Premier League this season, Bruno Fernandes. But in most of Bruno Fernandes' games, he's been consistent. There's only been a couple of games where he has looked off the pace. Uh, don't forget, he recently said after the 3-1 win against West Ham that we'd offered Bruno Fernandes a new contract. I were preparing to offer him a new contract worth £200,000 a week, doubling his current wages. So yeah, 7 out of 10 for Bruno Fernandes. Marcus Rashford, he's going to get a 6 out of 10. You know, Rashford did have some opportunities in the game, but he were at his best, was he, Marcus Rashford? And Rashford seldom has a poor game now, to be honest with you, because under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer area, he has been very, very consistent and he's improved and there's aspects of his game that have improved obviously Rashford was playing centrally and I've always said haven't I you know Rashford is more effective out wide Marcus Rashford has been part of the club for several years he's been a United player since the age of seven and he's been in our senior squad since 2016 so he's been in our senior squad now for a good four and a half years or something like that uh, not so long ago, he came back from a shoulder problem. Mason Greenwood, he's going to get a 6 out of 10. I think I thought he was okay. You know, he weren't brilliant. You know, Mason Greenwood did have opportunities in the game. Uh, obviously, Mason Greenwood was playing alongside Rashford. You know, Greenwood recently scored in our 3-1 win against West Ham. Played very well against West Ham. So I've had a perception on him recently, but a lot this season, I, ha I had a lot of a perception on him because obviously he had personal issues. 
he obviously had injuries, obviously he was out of illness at one point, but all he's been defending Mason Greenwood a lot this season. You know, saying like he's enjoyed a fantastic year, and this is his second season in our senior squad. And he's under contract on Man United until 2023. So yeah, Greenwood's going to get a 6 out of 10. Now, as you all know, we've got substitutions on in the game. Uh, Paul Popper came on. I'm going to give Paul Popper a 7 out of 10. I thought Paul Popper made a fantastic impact when he came on. He played some key passes. He sc scored the goal, didn't he? Or has it actually now been put down as a Canate own goal? But Popper's header actually came off Harry Maguire, didn't it? But either way, you know, he did make an impact when he when he came on, Paul Pogba. Uh, in reality, maybe Paul Pogba should have started the game. I actually thought he would have started the game. You know, he did start the game against West Ham and he scored an absolutely fantastic goal against West Ham and that was his first start for Man United in the Premier League for over a month and it was his first goal of the season in the Premier League. Now, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has hit back at Popper's agent, Mini Riola, saying that, you know, he's got to realise that football is about teams rather than individuals. Because Mini Riola recently told to or Sport that Paul Popper's time at Manchester United is over. And he says that, you know, he's no intention of signing a new contract. He's unhappy and he has to leave. And Mini Riola said he's got to change teams in January. Now, Mini Riola says there's a good chance that he could make a return to Juventus. You know, we could possibly get Paul De Bala if Paul Popper goes back to Juventus. Or we could possibly get Cristiano Ronaldo back to the football club. You know, obviously, Paul Pop has been relentlessly linked to have a move to Real Madrid. Don't forget, earlier on this season, he said w one day his dream, his dream is to join Real Madrid. You know, PSG, Barcelona have been in for him before, and so to have Inter Milan. We triggered that one-year extension on his contract earlier on in the season, and Paul Pop was not happy about this. But yeah, there has been no talks over getting him a long-term contract at the club. Uh, Paul Pobber not so long ago came back from an ankle injury. Uh, Ollie did confirm though that the ankle injury was totally contrast to the ankle injury that I had last season because he was out for the vast majority of last season. But anyway, Solskjaer's actually back to Manchester United to sell Paul Popper and replace him with a player that wants to be at Old Trafford. I think Paul Popper's unhappy at the club because he wants Bruno Fernandes' role. During the last international break, uh, Paul Popper made quite a few comments saying like this season's been the most difficult period in his career. And he says playing for France is a breath of fresh air. And in general, he was talking about his Man United struggles this season. But reflect on them comments, he did receive a lot of criticism. And, you know, Didier De Jomps, the France manager, was talking a lot about him saying that obviously he cannot be happy with his situation at Man United for playing out of position and for being left on the bench and that. And he was saying, like, he understands Solskjaer better than Paul Popper. Uh, sorry, he understands Paul Pop Popper more than Solskjaer. That's what Didier De Jomps said. You know, this is Paul Popper's fifth season since he rejoined the club. Is our most expensive signing at the moment because we paid £89 million for him. Not only that, he's one of the highest paid players at the club because he's on around two hundred and ninety grand a week. So there you go. Uh, Donny van der Beek, he obviously came on in the game yesterday night. You know, Donny van der Beek probably should have started yesterday night. I'm going to give him a 6 out of 10. I thought he did okay, you know, when he came on. Obviously, when Donny van der Beek came on, Solskjaer reverted to a back four. I think Donny van der Beek has enjoyed a good start to his Man United career. You know, he 
did start against West Ham, but obviously we're taking him off against West Ham. That game against West Ham was his second start in the Premier League for Man United. He made his full Premier League debut uh, the other week against Southampton. Uh, we paid £40 million for him from Ajax. So yeah, he's going to get a 6 out of 10. Brandon Williams, he came on in the game. I'm going to give him a 5 out of 10. Axel Tuanzebe came on in the game. Can't really give him a rating. And Fosu Mensa came on in the game. I can't really give him a rating. So that is your player ratings anyway. But yeah, Manchester United are out of the Champions League. And we are back into the Europa League. Very, very disappointing. And you have to blame Ole Gunnar Solskjaer because he is clueless. And I think Ole has taken responsibility, you know, from the 3 2 defeat yesterday night. Solskjaer, like I said, did go with the back five. But he's not the manager to lead the club to long-term success. And there's a lot of Manchester United fans now that are demanding him out. I think our defensive errors cost us that game yesterday night. But in the first half, RB Leipzig were on top, weren't they? Obviously, there was 1-0 up in the first two minutes. You know, it was a goal from Angelino. Um, Angelini also got an assist in the game. Their second goal came in 13 minutes. Uh, that was from Haidara. He also got an assist in the game. And their third goal came from Justin Cliver. He obviously came off the bench. RB Leipzig also had a goal disallowed. Um, it was Willy Auburn, so was we had a let off there. Emil Forsberg had a great chance, but didn't convert it. So it could have got worse for Manchester United as the first half went on. But we did show good spirit, you know, to get back into the game. Didn't we? But obviously you can't go 3-0 down in a game and expect to come back. You know what I mean? That's just how it is. But I thought we'd have qualified for the knockout stages because we did we had a good start in Europe. You know, we obviously beat PSG 2-1 in Paris. Very good performance. We beat an RB Leipzig 5-0 at Old Trafford almost two months ago. Um, obviously, Marcus Rashford had scored a hat-trick. And obviously, the other goals came from Anthony Martial and Mason Greenwood. And that was one of our best games under Oli. But I did say, didn't I, that game yesterday night was going to be totally contrast to the one at Old Trafford. And I was proven right. No, maybe you can say Anthony Martial and Edison Cavani were a miss. Obviously, Anthony Martial's recently been out with a groin problem. And Edison Cavani's been out with a muscle injury. I'm hopeful Martial and Cavani are available for the game at the weekend against Manchester City. They've only got niggles now, like Solskjaer confirmed. But there again, even if Martial would have been fit, I wouldn't have started him because, you know, Martial hasn't been clinical enough this season, has he? Uh, he started against West Ham, had a good chance, didn't take it. He had two chances against PSG, didn't convert them. You know, Solskjaer explained why Martial's been out of form prior to the game against Istanbul, Basakshia, and he said it was largely down to the three-match suspension he had in the Premier League because he got sent off in our 6-1 defeat to Tottenham. But in reality, he shouldn't have been sent off. 
Uh, Martial was good last season because he scored 23 goals in 48 games. Um, he was good in his debut season under Louis van Gaal. And he's enjoyed a good five years or so now at the football club. When we've played him recently, he's been playing out wide. But a lot last season he was playing centrally. Oli was the one that gave him Martial that number nine shirt. I think we got Martial in a deal worth, was it 57 or 58 million pounds for Monaco back in 2015. Cavani was definitely a miss because I think Edison Cavani has enjoyed a fantastic start to his Manchester United career. Um, weren't great against West Ham when he started, but he scored, He came off the bench to score two goals against Southampton the other week and he also got an assist. So he changed the complexion of that game. He obviously did well against Basakshia. He did well when he came on against West Brom. You know, he scored his first goal for the football club in our 3-1 win against Everton. And he almost scored with his first touch when he came on against Chelsea, Edison Cavani. But um, RB Leipzig, you know, they had a few plays out yesterday night. You know, Diopi Amicano wasn't playing because he was suspended. And obviously Man United have been linked with Diopi Amicano quite a few times. You know, we could go in for him next summer. When he's going to be available for around £36 million. That's when his release clause does become active. Uh, Klosterman was out for them. Hwang was out for them. Conrad Lehmar was out for them. Benjamin Hem Hemricks was out. And Hartman was out. And I think they also had another injury. But RB Leipzig are a good team. You know, they've got good players. They've got one of the best young managers in the world in Julian Nagelsmann. You know, don't forget last season, RB Leipzig got to the Champions League semi-final. You know, they're doing well in the Bundesliga this season. I think they're currently sitting second. And during the summer chance window, they lost one of their key players, and that was Termo Werner. He went to Chelsea, didn't he? But yeah... I think it's definitely time for Oli to go now. He's way out of his depth at Manchester United. And like I said, his decision-making really, really concerns me. In the vast majority of his games at Man United, he's been very tactically naive. But there has been some games where he's showed tactical flexibility. You know, like the game against West Ham. He obviously brought Rashford and Bruno Fernandes on and that changed the complexion of that, that game. Obviously, when we brought Cavani on against Southampton a few weeks ago, that changed the complexion of that game. But he's just not good enough for Manchester United, is Ole. And in a way, I do feel sorry for him because I think he's in a position that he shouldn't be in. And I think the club made a mistake by giving him the job permanently. But the main explanation we're giving the job permanently was reflects on what he did in that three month period when he was the interim manager. Now, we've it's been up and down this season, you know, we've had good results and we've had bad results and we have been informed recently in the Premier League, we've won our last four league games in a row and our way record's quite good, you know, we haven't lost away from home in the Premier League since January, we are unbeaten in our last, we have won our last, sorry, nine away games in the league. But our home form is a concern. I think we've only won, what, two games at Old Trafford this season. You know what I'm saying? But not all of the blame stems from Ole. You know, obviously some of the blame stems from him, but I still think, like, there's certain players that I've got to take responsibility. Um, obviously, the board's been one of the biggest problems at the club for several years because... Obviously, our board haven't backed any of the managers that we've had since Ferguson left. Obviously, our recruitment policy has been poor for several years. And Solskjaer has been Manchester United manager now for almost two years. I think it's next week, his two-year anniversary at the club. 
and he's under contract with Man United until 2022. And I can almost assure, or I will assure, sorry, that he will not see out his contract at Manchester United. He won't get sacked at this present time. You know, I think he could still be Manchester United manager in the new year. Because um, Ed Woodward has come out several times to support Solskjaer. You know, he came out not so long ago saying that Man United will back Ole Gunnar Solskjaer with a long-term plan centred around summer transfer windows. Because Solskjaer recently made a prediction ahead of the January transfer window and he says that he doesn't expect many ins or outs. But this is his second full season at the club and I did say to you, didn't I, this was always going to be a big season for him. I think... If we if we finish in the top four this season and win a trophy, that would represent a good season for Man United and then that would give us something to build on. Yes, we're out of the Champions League, but we wasn't expected to obviously win it anyway, was we? But I wanted us to at least get to the last 16 or the last day. But there's a good chance we could win the trophy this season. You know, we could win the Cowbell Cup. You know, we could possibly win the FA Cup. Uh, we won't win the Premier League. You know, Solskjaer came out not so long ago saying... Manchester United can win the Premier League this season and he admitted that the job is not too big for him at Manchester United. You know what I mean? Don't get me wrong, there's not all negativity regarding Solskjaer. You know, these positives is to take from his tenure as well. You know, obviously he's made good signings since he came to Man United. You know, he's enjoyed four transfer windows at the club and he's spent over £200 million. You know, he has got rid of some of the deadwoods since he came in. You know, we've seen a lot of players leave, haven't we, since Solskjaer got appointed in. You know, he did well in his first full season last season. He got us qualification for the Champions League. Also got us third and guided us to three semi-finals. Um, I also like the way he has promoted the youth. And we've enjoyed some good periods under him. Don't forget last season, went on a 19-game unbeaten run in all competitions. We was 14 unbeaten in the Premier League. So it just shows you, doesn't it? So they are the positives to take. In the last eight years, Manchester United have been so inconsistent. You know, we've sat three managers since Ferguson left, and that was David Moyes, Louis van Gaal and Jose Mourinho. So all these are four permanent managers since Ferguson left. Uh, we've spent over £1 billion on players in the last eight years. And people will say, reflecting on the money we've spent, we should be in much more of a commanding position. And we've brought around 36 players in since Ferguson left. And a lot of those players haven't been the right calibre players for Man United. You know, we haven't won the Premier League since 2013. So we haven't won that now for around eight years. I don't, I don't know when we're next going to win the Premier League. I think at some point we will, but... I think it's going to take at least a couple of more years. I don't see us winning the title under Solskjaer, that's for sure. But like I've said to you, no manager at Man United, or no manager in general, will replicate Sir Alex Ferguson's legacy. You know, Ferguson didn't settle in straight away because he didn't win out in his first four years at the club. But look what he went and accomplished after that four years not winning out. He went and won 38 major honours. You know, he enjoyed 27 years at the club and that. So, there you go. So, what I think Man United need is, is a new manager. Um, I think we probably need a new board. We need a director of football. So, obviously, we get that structural change that we need at the club. And, obviously, the manager gets the right backing at the football club. So, yeah. Uh, we've obviously been linked with Mauricio Potticino. There's obviously quite a lot of Man United fans now demanding him in. So let me know what you think. So anyway, guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.